Just opened in 2017. There's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. A moment ago, here was the scene. The Falcons coming out from their tunnel to the roar of all the folks here in Atlanta. We're ready for football as these Falcons get set to match up. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line with the Los Angeles Rams. Now the third leading rusher in the NFL last year, Todd Gurley. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. That was a really nice play to be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. He filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On second and nine, Goff. He's going to dump it off to Gurley. Six yards on the pickup, and they're going to have a third down. You better come home. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so, and gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it, and really gets them amped up as they go forward. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. So many questions about Todd Gurley in the offseason. How good is the knee? I mean, remember, he had a heavy workload the last couple years, nearly 4,000 yards from scrimmage, 40 total touchdowns, but just four carries in the NFC Championship game, 10 in the Super Bowl. So we'll see what kind of usage he gets this season. A gain of three, second down. They did a really nice job there defensively. They strung the play out, didn't give him a cutback lane. On each play, you have guys what I call our BCR players. Guys are responsible for the bootleg, for the cutback, and for the reverse. They played that one perfectly. And rode him right out of bounds. Just beating the play clock is gone. That's complete to his tight end, Higby. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 35. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. On first down, it's Gurley. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The last run got six, now second and four. Here's Gaw. Rush coming, and he's taken down. In for the sack, Deion Jones. But well, that takes a start to have a good drive, quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Now Goff, he's going to air it out deep for Woods. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. Zerline, of course, last year had likely the iconic field goal of the season, booting that 57-yarder in the Superdome to send his squad to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you really hurt the Saints fans on that one, didn't you? Sorry. They didn't want to hear that at all. But this guy deserves his nicknames, Greg the Leg, Legatron, because the ball goes through the post at a heavy rate, 87% in 2018.
After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Here come the Falcons set to get the ball back. Let's revisit their 1-5 start to the season that we were discussing earlier, Charles. That's their worst start since 2007, the year before they drafted Matt Ryan. I remember that well because there was so much controversy about drafting Matt Ryan on such a bad team, but they actually drafted him. Added some good free agents, drafted Sam Baker at left tackle, and went to the playoffs the very next year. This team's got to get it together in a hurry, though, because they've allowed, what, 34 and a half points per game in their latest four-game losing streak? And then they have the Rams coming up this week, home for Seattle, and then they get their open week. They've got to get it going right now. The Brotherhood has to come together for Atlanta. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. A carry for Devontae Freeman, who missed most of last season. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Corey Littleton, pro bowler for the first time a season ago, in to make the tackle. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. From the gun, it's Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Even though the Falcons have been struggling on this losing streak, Austin Hooper, he's doing his thing. He's been one of the beneficiary of Matt Ryan really slinging the football around in week six in that loss at Arizona. Another big game for Hooper. Eight catches, 117 yards, and a touchdown. On third and one, Ryan. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds. Let's go! Let's go! And they'll spot it right at the 20. L.A. Rams getting the football back here as they make their way out. C.D., I wanted to talk to you about that three-game losing streak they're on. First time that's happened under Sean McVay. Is this the real first real adversity they've faced with him as a head coach? I would say the first sustained adversity because, look, we all get it, right? You know, injuries pop up. You know, you lose a game you expect to win. But let's be honest about it. From the time he's taken over, they've run the NFC West. And you remember that game in Seattle a couple of years ago where they just blasted the Seahawks and it was a changing of the guard? Well, now they've got to fight just to be the top of the food chain in their own division. So, yes, sustained adversity, three-game losing streak. It's a big deal for the Rams right now. But coming up, they do go to Atlanta, who's struggling. Then to London to play Cincinnati, also struggling. So they'll try to get two wins before their open week. Yeah, these are games where, what's the term that they use in the NFL? These are get-right games. And they need to get right so they can get back into the NFC West battles and feel like they have confidence in doing so. Yeah, because you think about it, they're already two and a half games behind the 49ers in the NFC West. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. I know you feel that. All right, Brandon, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. From the gun, here's gone. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, w what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed, if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. Oh, the Falcons fly in and they block it. It's picked up. And this is a live ball, remember. And he will score. Touchdown, Falcons. As his guys are in for six. And the Falcons have taken the lead. 
Gardner, as you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Bryant tacks on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And a good effort on the return there. Gets them across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. A shotgun snap for Goff. He gets it to Cooks. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Cooks now in his second season with the Rams. He's had four straight years over 1,000 yards. He had two with the Saints, one with New England, and then he went over 1,000 again last year with the Rams. 80 catches, 1,204 yards. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. They'll find Everett there, complete. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Four yards the pickup, first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they Mike, stop Mike. it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, Linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Out of the gun. Golf. He'll get this one to cop complete. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. Here's gone. This is caught. It's Cooks. A big third down pickup of 20 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Goff now, 8 of 11 in this first half. He's got it first and 10. They go play action with Gurley. Now Goff. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. And they work this near the 5. He'll be stopped at the 6. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. They've got a first and goal to go at the 7. To the air again. Goff. 
And it's caught for a Rams touchdown by Brandon Cooks. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Rams are going to jump back in front. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. I know that's their first connection in this game, but you and I both know that Julio Jones is without a doubt his quarterback's favorite target. Oh, yeah, Matt Ryan loves this guy, and who wouldn't? Yeah, and the reason that he's that is because of his dependability. And quarterbacks have to have that from their receivers, meaning they know where they're going to be when they're running certain routes. They don't break them on them. They don't change them up and do their own freelance stuff and put their quarterbacks in bad situations. Matt Ryan has ultimate trust in Julio Jones. Clock runs less than a minute to go in an entertaining first quarter of play. On second down now, it's Freeman. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Let's and Falcons back. fans everywhere excited that Devontae Freeman is back on the field wearing number 24 in the red and black. Remember, he went down in week two in 2018 with an injury and didn't return. They're hoping to see the form that led him to 1,000-yard seasons in 2015 and 2016. To throw is Ryan. It's caught over the middle, Hooper. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football as they've got it with a second and one coming up. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Ryan, and this one brought in by Sanu. 11 yards there, first down. Mohamed Sanu is a guy that is often overlooked because he just quietly goes about his business. But how about last season? Had a career high 838 yards on 66 catches, and he can also play Wildcat quarterback for you as well. Ryan in the offense with a first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Now it's Ryan. Complete to Jones. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Again, Ryan. This is caught. It's Sanu this time for a Falcon touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab, and the Falcons have once again taken the lead. 
And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Bryant's extra point up and good. And the lead is now 14 to 10. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. There have been points on the board. We just saw back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. I love it. I'm high-fiving our statistician, Christian McLeod. And you, you're, you're angry. You're a defensive guy. If you met one of my defensive coordinators, God rest his soul, I'm surprised he isn't in this booth right now wanting to really take you on. This is not football the way he sees it. He wants a good old-fashioned kicking game, defense, field position, and we're getting an up-and-down-the-field game here. I'll take him. Where's, where's his tombstone? <laughs> Boot Hill, baby. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Third and two. Goal. And able to find Higby. It's complete. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. First down, L.A. Golf finding Higby. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. Golf. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 16 yards is the pick up there and a first down for L.A. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield Success on first down. Huge Mike, difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Goff on third down. And that's complete to Cooks. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. Goff in the Mike offense Wade. with a first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Here comes carry number ten for Gurley. 
And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that's going to make it second and 14. Check go. 180. 59. Mike, 59. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, Mike, check, check. 59. 59. Now it's gone. Now that'll be caught by Cup. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. The Rams on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and seven. That's complete to his tight end, Higby. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. On first down, it's gone. Then he'll find his target, Woods. It's complete. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. The Rams, they are on the move. They've got another first down. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And he takes it across for a Rams touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out as his guys are able to regain the lead. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. End result, touchdown. Zerline connects on the extra point, and it's now 17-14. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Looking deep for Julio. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. But one thing's for sure, when you've got a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. From the gun on third down, Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. <laughs> Second 
So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Rams will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and 10. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and Go flowing to make the stop hey. before it turns into something big. The Rams on third down. They've been very good. Five for seven thus far. This is third and nine. He gets it to Cooks. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. So out come the Falcons now. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. I'm coming after you. I'm coming you. To throw on second and six, Ryan. He's got Freeman here. It's complete. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Here we go, here we go. Now Ryan gets it off to Freeman. And a six yard gain gets him right around the 43. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Let's go, D, tighten up. Ryan. This one caught by Ridley. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 15 yards on the play, first down. Calvin Ridley more than justified his first-round selection in 2018. 64 catches as a rookie and found the end zone 10 times. Did a nice job getting open right there and picking up a first down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Here's Ryan. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Throwing again. Ryan. They'll set up the screen for Freeman. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? 
I think the latter. I like what you said there because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize it is broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? We That's the this. question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Now you're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field Michael, goal range. Yeah, you've got the lead. It's a, definitely a thought. Let's go ahead and try and increase it. But at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are in the field. Got the lead. They've done well in the first half. Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's the Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. And Woods has it complete. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout, their second, as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Goff now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. A shotgun snap for Goff. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Kamal Ishmael. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Falcon defense has a touchdown. Charles, I'm looking at you, and understandably, your mouth is wide open in disbelief. What were they thinking? That's going to be one of the great mysteries, but I do know this. When they went out on offense, I will guarantee they told them, don't just make anticipatory throws. Make sure you see it before you throw it. Didn't happen here. Trying to protect that lead, and now they gave it up. Bryant tacks on the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. Grady Jarrett with the tackle. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The final shot before break here. Golf. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. 
It's in the game. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now Ryan. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Okay, now I want to revisit what we were doing earlier, contender versus pretender. We did the AFC. Let's rock the NFC here, starting with the New York Giants. Pretender, but much improved. Okay, NFC North, how about the Vikings? Contender, no doubt about it. Carolina in the South, what do you think there? Contender and ascending. Okay, the quarterback play has become a good thing for them. Finally, out West, how about the Arizona Cardinals? Pretender, the division's just way too tough. There are three teams better than them. A gain there of 21 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's gonna be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A nice pick up there. 18 yards. First down, Falcons. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, yeah, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Ryan's pass taken in by Ridley, and he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. Was just, and he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons push further out in front. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. Brian extra point up and good, and that pushes the lead up to 11. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. 
Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. And he's going to be taken down. Goff is sacked. Tyler Davison hauling it off the edge to sack him. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Out of the gun, gone. This is caught, it's Cooks. And they've got it well across midfield, go, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. They run out of the shotgun with Gurley. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. Come on. 180. Come on, baby. I'm coming, baby. Woo. Another carry now for Gurley. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. On the stop there defensively, Tyler Davison. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Throwing on third, gone. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he'll go down to the ground at the 39, and obviously that's well short of the first. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard, and it's fourth. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right Let's where go. it is. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not is not the misses. It's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league, they don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. All right, CD, let's have a little fun. Now that we're into October, I'm going to give you some AFC teams. You tell me quickly, contender or pretender. You ready? Yes, let's do it. All right, let's start in the East. Buffalo. Contender for a wild card spot. Okay, how about the Chargers? Pretender. Check, check. Watch AFC the Watch North, the, the Steelers. Right here, right here. Contender because the <laughs> AFC North is a jumble. Okay, and then lastly, let's go to the South, the Jacksonville. Yeah! Pretender, Houston now in control. It's a loss of two, now third down. To say they've kept him under wraps running the football, that, that's an understatement. He's been completely neutralized. Yeah, they've essentially taken him out of the game, haven't they? And you know all the teams say, we're not going to let him beat us. Well, that's exactly what's let's happened go, here. Go. They've lived up to that. Right, let's get there. On third down, Ryan. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. That's it, baby. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Check, check, 59. All day, dog. 
Back to the workhorse today. It's Gurley. Up from his linebacker spot, Deion Jones making the play. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, here's Gone. And Cooks has it over the middle. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. And this one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the Good spot here. And the side Let's judge go. says that went out at the seven-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football. Because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. And he'll be out of bounds right around the 14. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And the Rams defense gets to him again behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll lead here to a third down. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. It's caught. Jones. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. Ryan to Jones, the Falcon connection there for a first. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline. But what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Ryan going to give to Freeman on the draw. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Throwing quickly, that's caught by Sanu. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. On third down, Ryan. He's got Hooper on the short connection. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Okay, Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. That'll be a 49-yard punt, six yards there on the return. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. Here's the Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, 
and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time to so make sure you get in shape. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third and 12. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The Rams on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third down and 12. Now gone. And the throw there going to be incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Here's Johnny Hacker now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. Oh, the Falcons fly in, and they block it. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. And he will score. Touchdown, Falcons. In for the score. And the Falcons push further out in front. Partners, you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Bryant tacks on the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Go, go. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 26. Let's go. Watch the Gone. And that's complete to Cooks. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Now a first down throw, gone. And that one's complete to Gurley. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Here's gone. He'll get this one to cop complete. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Four now can they five. continue to feed off that? So signs of life in what's been a dormant check, check, offense check, in this check, second check, half. Check. Here's first and ten. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. That's 
Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys Mike carrying Mike, the ball very, Mike very Green. happy. Hey, here we go. Mike spot nine, Mike spot nine. I'm here. Okay. From the 16, golf toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Now Gurley. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. Zerline's kick is up and through, and the drive will wind up yielding three. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. And as you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. They go play action now. Ryan. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. Now Ryan. And he can't escape the pressure. Ryan goes down. The perennial pro bowler Aaron Donald gets the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. To try again after the sack. Ryan caught by Jones. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made go. at the here Rams 39. Here we go. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, it's Ryan. This one caught by Ridley. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. 25 yards there on the catch and run. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. This is Freeman on first and 10. And this has been a familiar sight all they afternoon as they stop they him behind the line. He'll Keep wind up losing a yard on the play, up. and that'll bring up a second and 11. Let's get it. 
50. Ready, ready. 25. Right there. From the shotgun, Ryan. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's able to work it here to the eight yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Falcons on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This is third and four. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. From eight yards out. And the Falcons push further out in front. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not oh ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Meanwhile, Goff to Gurley as he drops it off for his running back. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Back to throw, Goff. He gets it to Cooks. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On first down, gone. He's going to sling this deep downfield, and that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Again, golf. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. It's a first down on a gain of 10. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. From the 50, it's golf. Well, that'll be caught by Cup. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows He's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. Throwing again on second down. Golf. That's complete to his tight end, Higby. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. 
Seven yards there and a first down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Goff in the offense with a first and 10. And he's five for six now throwing the ball on this drive. Goff throwing complete to Cup. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Get him, boy. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Here we go, here we go. Mike, Mike, check, check. 59, 59. Goff throwing again. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Brandon Cooks. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Rams are able to draw a bit closer. Now Goff will lead the Rams up to go for two. Throwing again is Goff. And they're going to get the two-point conversion caught in the end zone. And that cuts the lead a bit further. So they go with a pass there on the two-point try and able to convert it, Charles. And a good job by the offense figuring out their two-point play and using it well. It's interesting how people are using the strategy nowadays, though, isn't it? It really is, and I don't know how much that one, that particular play factored in, but with the PAT moving back in 15-16, that kind of changed things, didn't it? It's really a part of everyone's strategy now. When I talk with coaches and when we sit with them, they always talk about they actually have two-point periods in practice now, something they they never really did before. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And a good job here by the Falcons. Their hands team able to recover it. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. That one goes for 24 yards. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Ready to go. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. After the penalty, here's Freeman. Eventually wrangled down before reaching the 20, but a strong run. Give him six on the run. They're going to be faced now with a third and 12. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The Falcons will call on Matt Bryant for the field goal try. This to make it a three-score game late. 
The kick by Bryan is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one taken from the seven. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just you past ready? the 30-yard line. And the Rams getting set to go now. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. On second and ten, golf. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And they bring him to the ground just shy this. of midfield. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations. Here we go, fellas. Here we but go. a guy of his size, you can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. This pass into the hands of the running back, Todd Gurley. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Connection made here, Goff to Higby. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. To the air again, Goff. And that will be incomplete. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. Decision Wait, made for Sean McVay. They're going to go for it. Double tight, guys. Double tight. Four down. On fourth down. Golf. Open man. Higby, the tight end. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I Let's would go, find, go. plays have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. What do you do here down like this in this situation? Do you maybe just pick something out of the playbook you haven't called in a while or you call it a day? 
You can do that, or you pick something that's a staple for you and should work better and try and execute that on the way out the door and maybe get back to base and feel a little bit better as you end a, as you end a ball game. It's been a frustrating one for you. Yeah, we'll see if they go back to base. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Now Goff gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down and eight. Here's Goff. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 25-yard line. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Falcons here as we say so long from Atlanta.